hell, hello. I'm coming to you from my backyard today, the old sloth hiker. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do something different than I've ever done before. Um, I just purchased a uh, Pomali Timberwolf uh, titanium stove. And what we're gonna do today is I'm going to kind of break that out and show you how to put it together and then we're gonna roll a chimney and then we're gonna uh, we've got some wood here and we're gonna break this baby in and uh, hopefully we'll get our chimney all broke in so that uh, it will go up really easily uh, it's a little tricky to roll it up the first time so we're gonna try to do it um, I had bought a two inch uh, PVC pipe to kind of roll it on but now as I'm looking at uh, this uh, the little rings and stuff I got it a little too big I probably should have got a one and three quarter inch PVC or maybe even one and a half so uh, so anyways uh, about to make make do uh, my wife's gonna hopefully uh, come out and help me roll it up a little bit so hope you'll enjoy this uh, time together and uh, we'll be on and off uh, probably take two or three hours to get all this done and uh, so hopefully we'll uh, have some good footage for you uh, my inspiration for doing a hot tent uh, I watch a guy uh, called uh, the lone wolf 902 and uh, he is a, a guy who goes out and does hot, uh, hot t tenting and uh, camping in the winter all the time. He's from Canada and uh, he actually has probably about five or six different stoves that he uses and different kind of shelters. And uh, so I uh, have been watching that for, oh man, almost two or three years. And I, I, I uh, enjoy camping and usually when I can, I try to go out when it's nice weather. When I was retired, that was really, I could just go anytime during the week but now I, I'm kind of limited to my weekends and so if it's raining I gotta go anyway so uh, what we thought we'd do is <clears throat> you know see if we couldn't hot tent at least when I'm car camping uh, we could hot tent so I've bought a tent uh, a four man from Field and Stream and uh, it's got a rain fly over it as well and it has a really nice spacious vestibule that doesn't have a bottom to it and so uh, we're going to kind of adapt that and put a, uh, we've got a stove jack uh, to put in uh, for the chimney. And uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get that out and show you whenever we get that whole th thing done. But right now we want to get the stove uh, burned in and try it out and uh, see how it works. So that's what we'll be doing today. Okay, so what we're doing here is this is our roll of titanium for the chimney oh shoot <laughs> and it just came loose so what we're going to do is we're going to roll this out along the table here and it's going to be longer than the table <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is just kind of set this on here and i've got a one and a inch piece right now and what we're going to do is just roll it honey we're, and we're going to try to roll it Now, is it bending down on the end there? You got it there. There you go. And the hardest part is just tucking it in. Okay. Keep going. You have to catch up to me. You don't have to be real tight. It just has to roll. Oh, don't, don't go too far. <laughs> well, now we got to back it up and do it again. Go easy, go easy. You don't want to have a bunch of dents in it. We've already done it. Okay, now you're too far back. Huh. Well, this is the first time, but I've screwed this up. So I'm going to have a bunch of dents in here. Okay, now, can you put your rings on that end up there? Will they go on there? Get them on. Is it tight enough? Okay, go ahead and do... I'm going to give you 
another one. Now here, go ahead and just uh, uh, push, push them up, yep. Don't have to bend it. Push them all the way. Keep pushing them. They gotta come all the way down here to me. Okay, yeah, that's it. But, uh, okay, go ahead and put another one on. This is about as far as I can get into this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, put one more down on the end there, just to hold it on the end. I mean, like about four inches. On there. Got it? Okay. Now I gotta pull this out. Oh, oh I let it get loose. I can't do it. Okay, can you slide this one down? No, no, just this one. Just get it over this end. It'll be in good shape. Okay, now. Now what we're going to do is just slide this back down so that they're about even. I look about even to you, huh? Close, maybe. Not so good here yet. I can poke this back down in there now and maybe help straighten things out a little bit. You hold the other end just slightly. You don't have to hold it tight. Pretty good, doesn't it? There's a few dents, but not too bad. So for our first time, we didn't do too bad. And then this will actually go in on the stove. So we'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. So we got the chimney caught up. Now what happens is when you get your Pomali stove, it comes in a little uh, kit like this, and as you can see it has some velcro straps to keep it in place remember this only weighs the whole thing including the chimney it's made out of titanium so it only weighs about I think it's maximum of like four pounds it might not even be quite four for this particular still so we take those off and then here's the the top of the stove and we'll take that off you can tell it's the top because it has the little Pomali insignia on it. 
and then inside of that got all kinds of stuff here inside of it we've got the front and notice this is the front and it has a glass door which is really nice that's one of the things i like about this stove you can actually see a fire it's really fun has a nice little latch on it has a glass this is safety glass just like you would have in a, in a wood stove in your house it doesn't break easy has a little uh draft control here which is real easy to use and very sensitive okay and then we've got some sides and more foam <laughs> And uh, that, this is the other end. And then we have some things on the side, and it looks like I've got some uh, stuff here that's some plastic that is wrapped in. This stuff is really tough, <laughs> so it's not going to come loose while it's being ship this came from china it got from guangzhou china to here in about six days which i was really impressed with oh there we go so it's got two sides here and this is a uh, signature stove so it's 90 you know lone wolf 902 and so there's a little uh insignia right there and uh, that actually has, it's like a raised laser etch thing, and it actually can act as a match striker, so you can actually strike matches with that. So these are the two sides. And then we have the bottom, and the bottom has uh, little fold-out legs. Okay, so it sits like that. Now, let's go ahead and put the sides in place here. There are also some screws here that we're going to uh, put it together with. So I'm going to go get something to <laughs> take that to wrap off, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see if we can't put this thing together. So I'm going to have this be the front right here. This be the back. So there's some little fins these things go into so we just slide those in and <laughs> put them in place and we'll do the same on the other side and again these are these can go either way there's not a upside down or a right side too it just they just go in there like that this is going to be the back back here. So they have to go in not only the, the side ones here. You can slide them into that. But then they slide down. And they slide all the way into the fins in the bottom. So they've got fins not only on the side, but also on the bottom. So boy, that just gave it a lot more rigidity. And finally, we'll put this here. Here again is the, the front of the stove. We have, you know, a little notch there just to open that back and forth. And we have a little latch here, so it will latch. And then uh, you can pull that out, and the door opens like that. So, pretty nice. So let's go ahead and put this one in. Again, we're going to be sliding it in these two fins here and in the bottom fin at the bottom there and I find it's just as easy it appears to just slide these in from the top <laughs> well <coughs> I thought it was gonna be easy there we go Do it evenly, and there we go. <coughs> so there's your box, it's fitting in the bottom there. So you can see how 
it fit inside those little fins all the way around. Now what we want to do is put the top on. And of course, when you put the top on, you want to make sure your hole for your chimney is opposite the door. Uh, otherwise, that wouldn't work good. And this has lips all the way around. So this is the tricky one. You want to make sure all of those lips are inside there. And when they, when they all fit, whoops, I went down on the this end here and that didn't work right. So let's pop that back out. There we go. There, so I'm on the outside of each one, there we go. So I've got my box, I'll put that back down and there we go. Now it's still not together though because we gotta hook the top and the bottom together and make that rigid. And that's what these things are for here. We have four um, long, kind of like bolts, and they have nuts on either end. One of the things you want to do is always keep track of those nuts because you don't want to lose those. The nice thing about these is on one end it's very flush. See how flat it is? So that fits right down on there so you don't have any edges. So I'm going to undo this. And we're going to put that down through. And the easiest way to do this, I'm going to take one of my gloves off just so I got a little better handle here, is you open up the door and just put that little thing through the, the hole with your hand. You can see it better that way. Ah. There we go. And once you're through, off again so let's try this again there we go so I got that one through and I'm just gonna tip this up and put the screw on here and that will at least keep it in place and I think I'm gonna do the do it the same way and leave this up on its side. I think this is gonna be an easier way to do this. Just do it from side to side like this. Again, the flush end goes here. And then I can just push that in. Oh yeah, that was much easier. Again, the big thing you want to be careful of here is making sure that all the fins stay in place before you tighten it down. You don't want to have one of those walls come outside of those fins. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other screws in and I'll be back with you. Okay, so we've got the stove all put together. These uh, screws are screwed here along each corner. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing about them is you don't have to hold the top. They actually fit in a little slot there. And all you have to do is tighten the screws on the bottom. You can just finger tighten them. You don't have to tighten them down with a wrench or anything like that. Just as long as they're finger tight. The nice thing about these is that the, the, everything is pretty easy to get a hold of. These little things here I'm going to take off uh, to put my uh, damper in. And again, these are just really easy uh, things to turn in and out. It's, it's pretty important... Uh, when you're doing camping a lot of times it's cold and your fingers are cold and stuff and one of the nice things about this is that uh, There's not very many things that you have to really worry about with your fingers. Okay, so you can see this uh, This is what our uh, Damper looks like here and notice in the inside you can turn it you can shut it almost all the way down 
and then almost all the way up. Now, even when it's shut down completely, there's still air that can go up the chimney. And this, this uh, stove is designed to never really go out. Um, it will continue to burn even if it's just a little bit. It'll suck in oxygen from a few of the cracks and stuff and then send it up the chimney. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about when you damp it down, uh, it just won't burn as much. But uh, a lot of times uh, you can get a lot more heat out of the stove just by damping this down maybe a halfway or, or three quarters of the way. We're gonna burn a lot of it today just going full out. So what happens is these things fit right over. I'm gonna turn the damper. You want always to have the damper out the back end and then that way it will turn. So you can see here. And there are three little, those three little screws and you just put those screws in there and you don't have to turn it or twist it or anything. Just line up the holes and then tighten it down. And just like that. And I'm sorry, it may <laughs> be a little boring watching you, <laughs> having you watch me tighten down these screws, but I thought we'd really let you see exactly how this is done. This is my first uh, unboxing of it and uh, using it. I've watched videos of it, so I was pretty sure I knew what I was going to be doing. So we've got that tightened down, and just to check and make sure, you can see that. Uh, this is working fine and again when it's straight up with the pipe it's going to be open when it's crossways it's going to be closed so we're almost set here now all we have to do is we have to put the pipe on now on the top end of this pipe the chimney what we do is we have an arrestor and so I have put the arrestor on here that you want to put that on the inside so you just want to make sure you tighten down the, the side that's loose there and just kind of twist it a little bit and it will go right on there. Now I'm going to have some little guy hooks here and then you can guy this out so that it won't tip over. Uh, it's not really windy at all here today so I think I can get away without that. So right now I'm just going to put this in. Probably the hardest thing is just getting this to fit over here you just always want to keep your this end really nice and smooth and Once you get it going, it'll go pretty easy. You just have to, there we go. And then what you do is, I always pull this down, always, that's what I've been told, is you pull this down pretty close and that keeps like a nice tight fit there. And I can feel it's really nice and tight. And we'll just do that. And there we go. We've got a nice fit. You can see the chimney going all the way up to the top. This is a six and a half foot chimney. So you really don't worry too much about stuff, uh, you know, falling on your tent or on your tarp or things like that. Cause it's a nice tall chimney and this thing gets, pulls a really nice draft. So let me just pause for a second and I'm going to just check everything out and then we'll get ready to light it up and start breaking this baby in. So one of the things, uh, titanium, when you're burning a titanium in, if you have like fingerprints on it, 
what will happen is those fingerprints will actually, the oils from them, will burn right into the stove and you'll leave marks on you. Uh, so uh, just a, a way to solve that is to take some alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and wipe off your stove real good. Or what I'm doing is I'm using some, uh, uh, some of the disinfectant wipes. And I'm just trying to wipe off anything major that I can see. And that way, I'm not going to have maybe some finger marks where, <laughs> where I don't want them. So you can see on this side, especially here where the lone wolf is, I'm going to be showing that to people. So I'm going to at least wipe that off real good. And the back here, I'm going to wipe off. Now what happens is, after you get your stove going, uh, and after you break it in, then it doesn't, uh, it, it won't burn any more of those things in there. So, And I've got some stuff here. I'm going to just kind of buff it off here a little bit, maybe. Just make sure it didn't... Now, I have never really checked with this. Alcohol would have been better, but I didn't happen to have any isopropyl alcohol, so I didn't worry about it. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to load this stove up. Now, I've got several things of kindling. Normally, when you're out in the woods and stuff, you're going to get some stuff that are like pencil or less to get it started. And then after you get that, then you get it about as big as your fingers. And then you get a little bigger, and then eventually you can get some more big stuff in there. Uh, what I've got here is I've got a bunch of, uh, I believe this is pine, it's just two by four wood. And so I've got a bunch of that, and I've got a little bit of skinny stuff. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that stuff in there. And you don't have to put anything on the bottom of your stove or anything like that. You can just put the stuff right in here. Now I'm gonna put one of these bigger pieces along the bottom. Now the stove is about 11 and 3 quarter inches long. So I cut most of my stuff about 11 just so I have some room. Um, I'm going to put a couple of these little twigs here in here. So it kind of stays off the bottom so the air can get underneath of it a little bit to start with. And now I'm going to put one of these little fire starters in here. These are uh, made, uh, let's see, I think they're made by Duraflame and they're really... Uh, inexpensive and they really start really easily just one little match usually will get them started and then I'll just put some other stuff on top of that and so we'll put this over here and we'll put another little stick right here and put some more wood right there and it won't take too long for this wood to really start going some of these sticks in here like this again I tried to be pretty careful and cut these up so that we had the right size and it looks like I did a pretty good job uh, now we've also got some hardwood here as well for a little bit later on I think I'll just uh, go ahead and put one more in here and then we'll go ahead and get her started now I'm gonna make sure that my thing is straight up and down so that we have a good uh, draft and I'm gonna open this thing right up so that it's nice and big of course if you're there we go And I think you can see that. And what we're going to do is just shut that. And I've got the draft wide open. And you can't see it, but there's actually some smoke already coming out this chimney. And this is already getting warm. This chimney is getting warmed up right there. So we know it's burning. And so here we go. 
Now what will happen is this is uh, this titanium looks kind of like kind of like steel, uh, kind of a dull steel, not a stainless steel. But what will happen is once this starts getting hot, it'll get it'll start throwing off heat, and once it starts throwing off heat, what will happen is it's it'll start turning colors. It'll turn kind of a bronze color, and then eventually uh, get to be a blue color. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really crackling already, and it is really roaring, just like that. So this is a good thing. And let me just show you the stack in the chimney. You can see the stuff is really coming out of there. And that's what it looks like in the woods too. Now one of the things that a wood stove like this does is it burns stuff up very quickly. Okay, so um, you know it's not, you know, a lot of times you can get some wood going in here and you can get some pieces in this one probably big enough around and keep a fire going for maybe a half an hour, 40 minutes before you got to reload it. Uh, this is not something you're going to burn all night unless you don't mind waking up about every 45 minutes to an hour and putting new wood in, okay? Uh, so it's not like that, but what's nice is, is let's say it's raining and you got this inside a tent. You can sit inside that tent and just be, uh, not have a problem at all. Uh, you know, you can keep warm. It's not going to get put out by a rain uh, or a fire or anything like that. One of the things I like to do is I like to keep a glove on. Now, I'm going to just turn this down a little bit so we don't burn it quite so fast. And I'll actually show you this. I think you can see this. If I turn this all the way down, you can see that the flame goes down a little bit. But if I turn it back up, it's almost immediate action or reaction. This really flames really well. Um, I can also damp this down, and there I've got it about halfway down, and you can tell that there's actually uh, heat coming off of the stove already. I'm going to go ahead and keep it going most of the way fast for right now, just to really make sure we got a good bed of coals in there. Now again, it's real easy to add more. You just lift this baby up and open it up and just put another piece in there. While I got it open, I'm just going to go ahead and put two pieces in. And then we're going to shut it. And there we go. And it's just that simple. Now again, this is going to be really burning hot already. I can see some uh, bronzing of my uh, top of my stove. Of course, that's where it's going to get hottest the quickest. The sides are putting out a little bit of heat, but not a lot yet. Underneath, there's actually some heat too, but it's not... It, you don't usually have to worry too much about stuff underneath of it. It's probably best to put rock or uh, make sure you don't have a bunch of leaves or anything underneath of there. Because it does produce heat. This is only about three or four inches up, so... Um, it it uh, it's a little closer to the ground than some of the other stoves. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, just so we don't overheat too fast. Now, when you heat it, if you really burn this really really hot for a long time and really hot, especially on your first break in, sometimes you can get some warpage, um, and and the metal will warp a little bit. Usually. Uh, this stove is not going to have an issue like that because you still have to put the fins in place and those fins kind of keep those, you know, when you put them inside those fins, the fins keep it from warping. And then this top side, the top thing is a, a, a longer piece, but in the middle it has a bar right across the middle there so it keeps it from warping there too. So that's really nice. This, this is just a really good stove. Now, I was actually able to get this on sale. I think I only had to pay about $349. Normally, it's about $400. Uh, I happened to see it on sale. I think at $420 or $430. I happened to see it on sale one day, and I'd been contemplating and contemplating and contemplating this. 
and we just found out we were going to get those new stimulus checks and i and it went on sale and i thought oh i gotta bite the bullet so so uh, this is part of my stimulus check that i got got right here so I have to say that that tent or that stovepipe is really hot because all that heat's going up there. So that's one of the things that produces some heat, okay? And I just put my glove up against there by accident and <laughs> notice I got some plastic right on there. So that's going to probably have to burn off now. So uh, if you're going to use gloves on this thing, you want to use leather gloves. That would be better. Notice again, I might have gotten some on there as well. Not quite sure. Now I can see a lot of uh, a lot of bronzing starting to go on here on the top. Again, this is just the top. We have to do the sides and the bottoms as well. So we're gonna have to burn it a little while. I had no idea how fast this was gonna go through. So, uh, you know, I split, this is one, in this bag here is one two by four. I think it was a six foot long one or something like that. So I cut them up 11 inches and then split it basically in three parts. So a two by four, I got a rough, rough, two by four because I didn't have any at home I didn't have any old stuff it cost me I think four or five bucks but uh, you know five bucks is really nothing if it'll heat up like for an hour or an hour and a half that's not bad at all and uh, normally I'll go around to like uh, construction sites and just pick up old two by fours that they've used uh, uh, you, you know you can grab those uh, and get them for free uh, once they put them in the trash so so uh, you can get your wood pretty easy and of course if you're out in the woods you just grab you know branches and stuff that come down out of the trees and cut them up I've got some longer ones cut up here Let's see if I can show you those so here let me I'll just grab them so I didn't process them down like I might if I was out in the woods if things are dry uh, you don't have to worry about it if they're wet you usually want to split these in half but I just come to 11 inch length so these are pretty nice pieces I'm gonna try this near the end and see how fast I go I'm gonna turn that back up so it burns a little faster now and boy that is just immediate as soon as you open that shaft up it really starts to go and you can just really tell it is getting a little windy and I'm a little worried about my stove top here because I don't have it I don't have it guide out so I'm hoping that the wind doesn't blow too much otherwise I may have to stop this before and I don't want to stop it before this gets a little hardened out here so so we're gonna try to keep it burning as hot as we can again I'm a wind all week here like for the last two days. I was gonna do this yesterday, there was no wind at all, uh, but uh, didn't get it done. I just had a lot of other stuff I had to get done first. So this is uh, Saturday before Easter, 2021. So I'm excited about this. this. This is gonna be really nice doing this in my tent. And uh, I'm thinking about getting a, a hammock as well. Uh, or not a hammock, a, a hammock tent as well that I can do this in. When you're in a hammock, you're actually off the ground, and of course heat rises off the ground, so uh, this can even keep you warmer in a hammock than like if you're in a hot tent, you're laying on the ground. The ground is usually the coolest part, and then as you go up in the tent, it gets hotter up till the top. Now, I have a little tiny fan that I can actually put in the top of my tent, and it can blow so the heat back down towards me, so that's a nice thing that I can use. And it'll last about five or six hours just on battery. So, so I'm not too worried about that.
And boy, this baby is really putting out the heat. So I thought I'd give you a, a bird's eye view here to see the flame. This is full out, full open. And then if I slide it down, now you can still hear the fire crackling, but it's you cannot hear the wind roaring through there, and you can see the the flame dies down a little bit. But boy, when you open it back up, you'll be able to hear the start to roar. So I'm really excited about that because it's very, very responsive. Especially for a little small stove like this. You can see on top that the stove is starting to bronze up and actually get that kind of purplish color. You can also see it on the sides. Obviously near the top it's a little more so. Again, you can see it, the pomali, it stays right there. And it really, the bronzing really sets it off. You can see on the top here, it's really getting nice and bronze. And even over on this other side, it is as well. So, yeah, chimney's starting to get a little coloration, although up near the top it's not as much you can see the smoke that's coming out of here and I like it when that smoke is going up instead of sideways that means the wind isn't too strong now I've got it pretty well tightened down here this last ring I pulled down so it was pretty tight so I'm not too worried about the thing falling off and again you can you can move this thing by just sliding it around. And again, you can see the lone wolf insignia there. 902. And I'm excited to get this. I've watched his channel for over a year now. And he's kind of inspired me to do this. It's nice to be able to get a stove that's his namesake. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I think he's also working on a new kind of hot tent as well through Pomali. So uh, I'm excited about that. It's interesting. He worked with uh, an American company and uh, they just didn't really do him very well. And he finally tried to work with him and tried to work with him. And finally decided, hey, I got to go to someplace else because uh, he just wasn't having good luck and they weren't doing what he was asking them to do. So. You know, I, I believe in supporting American companies, but, you know, American companies need to be willing to do what the people want them to do, too. So, <laughs> anyways, I don't want to get into the political thing here, so that's not my point here today. So, I uh, just took my uh, watch. I've been having it sit out here. It's got a thermometer in it. And it was about 60, 60 degrees or so, something like that, 65 degrees. I've just up, held this up here for about two minutes, okay, above the stove. And you can see right now, if I can get it in there, it's 99 degrees. So just holding here, I can't hardly hold my hand here anymore because it's getting that hot. So again, if you've got a... If you've got a uh, <laughs> uh, this in your tent, and that's putting that kind of heat out. Now this is outside, and there's a breeze here, so it's not actually building up, but it, it, it's definitely uh, really putting out the heat here. You can see it's really starting to get that nice bronze and blue color. It's looking really nice. I'm not sure whether this camera will pick it up or not, but the heat is coming off this oven so much that it's refracting the, the air, and you can see the heat waves coming right off of the top of the oven here. 
I won't really be able to tell for sure until I take a picture or watch it on the video, but uh, I cannot put my hand, now my hand is right here, and it's all I can do to keep my hand there, oh, about five seconds and that's it, then I gotta take it off. So this baby is putting out a lot of heat. I'm very confident that when we get it inside a tent, it's gonna heat that tent up really well. Even with some doors open, I think it's gonna produce enough heat that uh, it's gonna keep it warm. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to uh, get our tent out and try it out. Would have been a great night to actually have tried it last night. It was really cold down in the mid 20s, but it was a beautiful night, so wouldn't have had to worry about any rain or anything like that. Uh, the wind has been kicking around a little bit. If you look way up at the top here, the arrester there has some little, has three little things on it and you can hook guy lines to it. I didn't do that today because it was not very windy. <laughs> and now the wind is kind of picked up. So I let my fire go out. My uh, The wind was picking up quite a little bit and I didn't have tie downs on the chimney. So I, I let the fire burn down some and then I picked up the chimney. The chimney comes off really pretty easy. So I just pulled that off, laid it down on the ground. It was not so hot that it would even burn the grass. And uh, then I put some tie downs on it and I'll show you those here in a second. And uh, now we've started it back up again. I'm gonna do some timing, maybe get some uh, water out and uh, see how fast it takes to boil and some things like that. So uh, we'll get back with you shortly. So I've got a couple, uh, tie I always put two tie outs on it right now. <clears throat> I've got some, uh, I got three little titanium uh, uh, hooks or uh, uh, clips from uh, Hammer Gear and uh, they're just tight enough that uh, uh, they're a little bit tight, which makes them stand out from the side. I think you can see that one standing out pretty good. And uh, so I've got two of those on there. I just got a loop there, fisherman's knot, and then a loop through the ends of that. And then I just brought them down here. And today I've just got them tied on to uh, my chair here. That way I could adjust the chairs easy. But I could put those down as a stake too. Now I've got this on a table. It's uh, it's this... this uh, table that this is on is about oh I don't know probably three three and a half feet tall normally this would be on the ground or maybe on a little small stand inside my tent so I've got uh, that particular guy out right there that goes up to that end okay that guy out uh, on that one is uh, about uh, 12 or 14 feet and this other one is about 10 feet maybe 12 and that should be long enough to tie to any you know trees that are close by or possibly you know just stake it into the ground and I'm gonna put another one on here I'll probably put it about 15 feet so I got different lengths and I can always loop two together if for some reason I need an extra long one so you can see the flames burning good in there <coughs> uh, my tent is uh, or my stack is nice and uh, bronze already here on the bottom and then uh, on the top, it's starting to get bronzed up to about there. And then you can see it kind of tapers off. And then it gets a little bit hotter there up at the top again, where it kind of gets trapped. Uh, yeah. So I'm real excited about this. this. This stove is just working great. Puts out a lot of heat. I'm really impressed with the heat, especially after it gets going for about 15 or 20 minutes. It's really putting out the heat. So I just started uh, some water here. I filled up... I think I got about uh, 600, 650 mils of water in my little uh, Stanley cup. This is what I usually cook in when I'm out uh, backpacking. So I've just put some water, it's just cold water out of the tap and I've just put it on. I'm gonna see how long it takes to boil on uh, this thing. I don't have it all the way up. I've got it shut down a little bit and I have the damper in the back shut down about halfway. So this is kind of more like my idle, it's not really an idle, but it's uh, I'm, not, I'm not going full speed and full tilt here. 
but uh, this would be like what I would probably do inside a tent once I get it going and w once it's producing some heat we're not worried about making it go as hot as it can we're making sure that the wood lasts a while and uh, it just keeps building up in the tent so we'll uh, we got a stopwatch on it we'll find out going about half speed or two quarters three quarters speed uh, how fast it takes to boil some water so it's been heating up about five minutes it's not really on full tilt here and yet we've got some little bubbles starting to form already so uh, this is cooking nice and fast and I only had the uh, I've only started this fire about five minutes before I actually put it on the oven so or on the stove top so it's uh, it's definitely cooking really good and I'm not I don't have it going full bore yet uh, so uh, I'm excited about that excited about cooking a little bit more inside the tent So it took about 12 or 13 minutes to go to a full boil uh, over this and now I've got some coffee I'm going to enjoy drinking. Now I'm not a connoisseur of coffee like some of you guys are, uh, but uh, so I'm just using some old Folgers today and I'm just using some instant coffee so a lot of people are purists and they really got to have their good coffee but I'll take this. and. I just uh, love the fact that I can make something hot and cook it over the stove. I'll probably get another titanium uh, uh, pot. Maybe not even titanium. I might just get another one of these Stanleys. Uh, but I think I'll get I think I'll get another titanium that's a little bit wider, and uh, then I can cook some things like. You know put some vegetables and stuff in have some soup things like that so yeah so i'm gonna enjoy some coffee and sit here in front of the fire so i've got a pretty good fire going in there right now i'm gonna let that burn down a little bit then i'm just not way down because i want to get these two bigger ones started here these are pretty good sized uh, pieces and i haven't batoned them or anything uh, but what i'd like to do is to see how long a time uh, they will actually keep going. So I've had my stove going about tw probably about 30 minutes right now. You can see that the uh, the chimney is really, you know, getting that purple color. The side is also getting the purple now. The top has really done a nice job as well. Um, I just really like the way this is burning in. The chimney, I like to get it burned all the way up to the top. So that's why I came back out and restarted it and I have it guide out now so it's a little steadier and I'm not worried about it falling out or tilting or things like that so so far so good so <laughs> I just checked my watch here I was sitting here and I checked the uh, temperature and it's I think you can see it there it's 93.3 degrees now this watch has just been sitting here down here there's the stove and there's that so it's like 93 degrees that temperature has gone up just right to there uh, just on the side actually below it almost okay it's warmer underneath the stove this wood is kind of warm it's not hot enough to ignite and of course obviously it's warmer up here that's where the flame goes now I just put in a couple of, of bigger round logs here and that kind of stopped it from burning a little bit uh, I don't have them batons, so I'm anxious to see how a round log goes here. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to try this is because when you get ready for bed at night, I don't want to be waking up like every hour or every half hour and having to load this baby up. When you're using that uh, pine 2x4 stuff and things like that, it, uh, it burns up pretty quick. What I'm interested in is how long will this burn with some regular wood that's more hardwood. So I didn't baton this, I just cut it up in little sections like that and I wanted to see. And it's starting, it's not burning real, real hot, but that's okay at night. Once you get your tent warm enough, uh, at night you just want it to keep producing heat. As long as it's producing heat, it's going to keep heating up the, the tent and it's not going to let it cool off as much eventually it's going to burn all up and it's going to cool off and you know if you don't wake up and put new wood in it's going to be cold in the morning you might have some coal still in it uh, but uh, you're going to have to restart it but uh, uh, we're just trying to see how how long we can 
kind of depend on a couple or three of these round uh, pieces that size. You really wouldn't want to put too much bigger round piece in here. I think I could get three or four of them in. Uh, and, and so that would, I, you know, right now it's looking like they're burning, but they're not burning real fast. So uh, that might be a good way to kind of keep a fire going in the evening. Obviously, if I baton this so that the dry stuff on the inside is more able to get, uh, you know, uh, get exposed to the fire, it's going to burn better. So just enjoying a cup of coffee here and I'm just really excited about this stove. I wish I had it in the fall so that I could be looking forward to a lot of winter camping. I probably am going to car camp with this most of the time. It is uh, lightweight. That whole chimney and everything is only about four and a half pounds. So maybe not even that much. So uh, it's pretty easy to carry and I think I could get it in my backpack. Uh, but uh, you know, if I want to take my hammock or my quilt or if I take my down sleeping bag, those are all heavier too. So I could carry it. If I didn't have to carry too far, it wouldn't be too bad. But, uh, you know, right now I'm thinking I would just like this so that like I can winter camp and car camp. I can put it inside my tent and stay warm, have a nice warm evening looking out the window or looking out the door of my uh, thing. And uh, I don't have to, you know, just because I car camp, I don't always car camp in a in a park sometimes i can car camp other places uh, close to a lake or things like that so i'm looking forward to that uh one of the things i really like in winter camp is that like this will be in the vestibule of my uh my hot tent the one that i'm going to make and uh so what will happen is I, I can take my boots and i can put them down like right next to this thing and my boots aren't going to get you know they're going to dry out i can uh hang a little line above the th tent uh, uh, from like the the supports and uh, I can pour put some socks over there and dry them out or dry some gloves out so I have a, a way of drying some things out too uh, which I think is really going to be uh, awesome and uh, so I can't say enough about all the different possibilities and I'm looking forward to uh, doing that stuff and sharing it with you I'm hoping in April we'll get a couple more cold nights and I'd like to get my tent done uh we're remodeling in our house as well so right now we couldn't get to the sewing machine to sew the stove jack into my tent right now anyways uh but hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll be able to do that and uh and then i'll be able to uh uh actually put it in a tent and i can i can do that out here i'm going to test run it out here in the backyard the first couple times make sure i know what i'm doing and i don't set anything on fire and then uh you know we'll probably do some car camping and and uh I'll probably get Dave to go with me and we'll we'll see what we can do to uh, do some real hot tending. As you can see, those big round logs are starting to go now. It took them a little while to get going, but now they're burning pretty good. But they're not burning up real fast, but they're producing a lot of heat. So I think they're probably going to last maybe, I would guess they probably last an hour, maybe an hour and a half or two, um, just by how fast they've burned so far. Um, so if I put a couple more things in there, a couple smaller ones with them, uh, I could probably get an hour and a half or two hours out of it. So typically I'll sleep or I'll, I'll stay awake until 12 or one o'clock. And then, uh, I'll probably load, fill the stove a couple times first, and then I'll pack some of this stuff in and I could probably get a couple hours. I can probably keep this, uh, stove putting out heat till like three or four, maybe four thirty in the morning and then I'll be asleep and it'll go out and then in the next morning I can pack it right back up and get it warm again. You know mornings are the time you really like to have that heat after you get out of your sleeping bag you don't want to be freezing. This will be nice because I can still stay in my sleeping bag or when I get a hammock tarp I can do that as well. I can stay in my hammock and I can go ahead and feed the fire and get it started before I even get out of the hammock. Boy won't that be nice. All right, well, like I always say, if, if we can do it, you can do it too. Uh, this is an expense, so don't go out and try to buy one of these unless you're sure you really want to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, And you can make your own for quite cheap, although making your own has its own difficulties. Uh, but uh, there's plenty of stuff on the Internet to show you how to do it either way. But like I said, I uh, if I can do it, <laughs> I'm sure you can do it as well. So... 
have fun. Uh, hope you have a great week. I'm going to enjoy this final Saturday before Easter. Have a little bit more coffee and uh, then just sit here and enjoy the sunshine.